In this presentation, we will learn the concepts of R square and the adjusted R square. Think of a regression model where yi is equal to alpha plus beta xi plus ei and let y hat i be the estimated value of y. So we know that yi minus y hat i is equal to e hat i or yi is equal to y hat i plus e hat i where e hat i is the estimated value of the ith error term. So let me subtract y bar from both sides. You have then y i minus y bar is equal to y hat i minus y bar plus e hat i. So think of summing y i minus y bar squares the left hand side. So if you sum the left hand side then the right hand side becomes remember the formula a plus b the whole square which is a square plus 2ab plus b square. a is y hat i minus y bar so a square becomes if you sum it over then it becomes summation y hat i minus y bar square b is e hat i so summation so 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 b square if you sum it up becomes summation e hat i square and the two ab terms if you sum them over again is 2 into summation y hat i minus y bar into e hat i fully at the last term the point that i'm going to make is that the last term is going to vanish because all terms are equal to zero so let's think of opening out summation y hat i minus y bar into e hat i. If you open the brackets then that term becomes summation y hat i e hat i minus y bar summation e hat i. Now we know that summation e hat i is equal to zero and if you uh, are wondering why then the next slide will sort of remind you of why it's equal to zero. So the last term becomes zero then we are left with summation y hat i you know so 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 right so look at what happens to summation y hat i e hat i because y hat i is equal to alpha hat plus beta hat xi we substitute that in the equation and we get summation e alpha hat plus beta hat xi into e hat i if you open up the brackets you get alpha hat into summation e hat i plus beta hat into summation xi e hat i we know that summation e at i is equal to 0 and we also know that summation x i into e at i is equal to 0. In fact, these are two conditions that uh, you get when you differentiate summation e i square with respect to alpha and beta as we will see in the next slide. In order to simply recapitulate a bit, in the simple linear regression model y is equal to alpha plus beta x i plus e i we are trying to find values of alpha and beta which will minimize the summation ei square which is nothing but summation yi minus alpha minus beta xi the whole square. How do you solve this? First you differentiate summation ei square by alpha and you get the equation minus 2 summation yi minus alpha minus beta xi is equal to 0 minus 2 cannot be 0 so summation yi minus alpha minus beta xi has to be 0 but recognize that summation y i minus alpha minus beta x i is nothing but e i. So summation e i is equal to 0. Similarly, if you differentiate summation e i square with respect to beta, then you get minus 2 summation x i into y i minus alpha minus beta x i is equal to 0, which means that summation x i into e i is equal to 0. So the point is, if you estimate alpha hat and beta hat, then the conditions summation x i into e hat i is equal to 0 and summation e hat i is equal to 0 will have to be satisfied because we derive the estimates of alpha hat and beta hat by uh, from these two equations. So then because summation y i minus y hat i into e hat i is equal to 0 as we saw in the last two slides, 
then we get summation y i minus y bar square is equal to summation y i hat minus y bar square plus summation e hat i square. Now notice what is summation y i minus y bar square. It is the sum of the deviations of y from the mean. So if y bar is the mean y1 minus y bar square plus y2 minus y bar square the total variation in y. Whereas what is y hat i minus y bar square? It is the sum of the gaps between y hat i, the estimated values of y and the mean of y. Why does the estimated value of y differ from the mean of y? Because of the regression equation and therefore summation y hat i minus y bar square is that part of the variation in y which is explained by the regression model. Similarly, summation e hat i square is the residual part of the variation. So we call it the residual sum of squares. So we call summation y i minus y bar square as the total sum of squares at the left hand side of the equation. Summation y hat i minus y bar square we call the explained sum of squares. That's the part that's explained by the regression model. And summation e hat i square we call the residual sum of squares. So we have the total sum of squares equal to explained sum of squares to the restful sum of squares. Let me divide both sides with the total sum of squares. So the left hand side is 1, the right hand side becomes ESS upon TSS plus RSS upon TSS. We can write ESS upon TSS is equal to 1 minus RSS upon TSS. So what is ESS upon TSS? Notice that TSS is the total variation in Y. ESS is that part of the variation in Y which is explained by the regression model. So ESS upon TSS is the ratio of the variation that is explained by the regression model or the total variation in Y or that part of the variation in Y that is explained by the regression model. Obviously, RSS, the lowest value of RSS can be Z. So this number is called the R square. Right. This ESS upon TSS is called the R square of the regression model. The lowest value of the R square can be 0 when all the variation in Y is actually the residual sum of squares and nothing is explained by the regression model. The highest value of R square can be 1. That is all the variation in Y is explained by the regression model and nothing is explained by the uh, you know the 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 residual sum of the, the the error term is obviously obviously unlikely. Uh, so, but the point remains that when you're choosing models, a model with a higher R square is better than a model with a lower R square because the model with the higher R square implies that a greater proportion of the variation in Y is explained by the regression model. So, let us now understand this graphically. On the x-axis you have x, on the y-axis you have y. The red line which is parallel to the x-axis gives you the mean value of y which is y bar. The green line is the regression line given by alpha hat plus beta hat xi. So it gives you the value of y hat i at a particular point of xi. Now consider the distance between yi which is given by the solid white dot on top of the yellow line. The distance between yi and y bar is the height of the yellow line. You can see that that part can be broken into two parts. One is the distance ab which is the distance between yi and y hat i which is the which is e hat i and then the distance bc which is the distance between y hat i and y bar. Now y hat i minus y bar is the distance that is explained by the regression line. Whereas the distance from a to b that is the distance between y i and y hat i is the part that is not being explained by the regression line. So, we have been able to break the total distance between yi and y bar 
into one part which is y hat i minus y bar which is the distance bc and uh, and 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 y i minus y hat i which is the distance ab now as i said the r square is a very important measure if you want to compare two regression equations because the r square ultimately tells you what is the proportion of the variation in y that is explained by a particular model. So suppose you have a model A which has an R square of 0.8 and a model B which is an R square of 0.6, then model A is preferable to model B because model A explains a greater proportion of the variability in y compared to model B. Of course, it's very important that both the models have the same dependent variable. That is, you are comparing apples to apples really. Of course, when if one model has a dependent variable y and the other model has a dependent variable z, then you can't compare across r squares. One model could be y, the other model could have the dependent variables log of y, even then you really can't compare uh, the r squares of the two regression models. As I said before, the r square is a very useful model for, uh, 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 r square is a very useful measure for comparing uh, across regression models. It would seem that a higher R square is always better than a lower R square. And you know, many people believe that it comes to the so so and, and, and what we do is a game of maximizing R square. So we really put in all sorts of explanatory variables in the regression model in the quest of achieving a model with the highest R square. But that can be a bit tricky. Now suppose that I tell you that model A has an R square of 0.85 while model B has an R square of 0.8 and asks you to choose between the two models. You probably choose model A because it has a higher R square, a slightly higher R square compared to model B. And so therefore seems to explain the variation Y a little bit better than model B. But now suppose I tell you that model A is based only on 15 degrees of freedom well, model B has 30 degrees of freedom. Will your choice change? Well, it should change. It should change because since model B is based on more degrees of freedom, it's based on more of information and therefore it's actually based on twice as much information and therefore is likely to be much more robust than model A, which is based only on 15 degrees of freedom. The point is, by just looking at R squares, you'll never be able to make this comparison because the R square does not take into account the degrees of freedom at all. So you need a model that explicitly accounts for the fact that model A is, is, is based on a fewer number of degrees of freedom compared to model B. And for that, we use a measure called adjusted R square. It's called adjusted, which adjusts for degrees of freedom uh, and written as R bar square. So how does the adjusted R square differ from R square? Look carefully at the formula for the adjusted R square. It is one minus ESS upon N minus K upon TSS upon N minus one where n is the number of observations you have and k is the number of parameters that you've estimated in the regression equation. So the denominator of the function of, of, of you know, TSS is divided by n minus 1 and the numerator ESS is divided by n minus k. So now think of what happens if the degree of freedom goes down. If the degree of freedom goes down, then because the numerator has ESS upon n minus k and because n minus k is now smaller, ESS upon n minus k will tend to go up and therefore 1 minus ESS upon n minus k divided by TSS upon n minus 1 will tend to go down because the the, the numerator in 1 minus the fraction will increase. 
you know, because Es is upon n minus k will increase and therefore 1 minus Es is upon n minus k upon Ts is upon n minus 1 will tend to decline. So, as the number of degrees of freedom increase, the adjusted R square uh, can actually decline. But at the same time, because the degrees of freedom are, are declining uh, as a result of num increasing number of explanatory variables and if the explanatory variables that you have added actually significantly improve the fit of the regression model, then the RSS will tend to go down as well. That's the important point. So what this model does is, as you increase the number of degrees, uh, number of parameters that you're estimating the regression model, the degrees of freedom goes down. So there's a downward pressure on the uh, on on adjusted R square, but because the RSS might fall as well, since some of the explanatory variables might help predict Y well, uh, actually the adjusted R square might also tend to go up. So the adjusted R square tends to go down as n minus k goes down. So if you increase the number of explanatory variables k, then n minus k goes down, so the adjusted R square moves downwards. At the same time, because some of the new explanatory variables might improve the fit of the model, the RSS might go down. And because the RSS goes down, adjusted R square tends to move up. So whether adjusted R square will fall or rise, depends upon whether which of the two fact, two effects dominates. The point is, the adjusted R square is now penalizing the model for reduction in the degrees of freedom, but also adjusting for the fact that some of the new explanatory variables which have added in the regression model might actually improve the goodness of fit of the regression model. Uh, and so, 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 so the R square adjusted R square will go up depending up or go down depending upon uh, which of the two effects overcome the other. So the lesson is that this is R square is superior to R square because it takes into account the, both the costs and the benefits of including additional regressors in the regression whereas the R square only accounts for the benefits and doesn't tell you what the costs in terms of reduction of the degrees of freedom are when you include additional explanatory variables.